Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue working through our conveyor trainer exercises. In this video, we are using Industrial Concepts Conveyor Trainer, and we are using our Compact Logics Trainer. And we have videos on how we integrated the two. We've done some basic start stops. We've talked about some things that happen differently at power up, depending on how you have it configured. And in last video, we started talking about how you could do some timed logic. But at the end of that video, I showed you some problems with that setup. Before we go any further, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Like I always say, your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. But so we have it set up for timed control. And we're looking at this sensor, which I'm calling our shiny sensor, but we're using our black pusher to eject it. So let's go ahead and hit our start button. And we'll drop a part in. And it ejects great. But we talked about a couple problems. This one, what happens if we drop a part and we drop another part right behind it? So it sees that one before it actually gets there. And it missed the second part. Or what happens as the machine wears a little bit? And I can simulate some wear by turning in this flow control on the side of the cylinder. So now it's going to come down. It went to eject, but the cylinder was too slow. So it actually missed putting the part down in the tray. So that's what can happen when you have timed control. As parts wear or there's variation in products, it probably won't be very versatile. So we're going to work on fixing that today because this has quite a variety of sensors. We have sensors to know that our cylinders are extended and retracted. We also have sensors specifically for our shiny or our black pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the black sensor operate the black pusher. And that's not going to be a really difficult change. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our program and right here, it says shiny part present. And then we have that time delay. So we're going to just double click on it and we're going to change this to local colon one colon i dot data dot two. And that's gonna be our black part present. Now I could take and put that directly in rung three and get our whole delay out, but I'm gonna leave it there because I don't know why really yet, um, but I may come up with something neat to do with it. So what I am gonna do though is I'm gonna put our preset down to zero. That way really it's a zero second timer and it will immediately make the ejector work. So let's go ahead and put that in and make sure it works. Now where before we were using the shiny ones because it was this sensor, we probably want to use the black ones now. Actually on this sensor, you can use either or. And that might, there you go. That may be our time and delay experiment. But we're going to hit the start button. It's going to come down to our sensor. And there you go. That works great, but we're not retracting like we were before. So let's go figure out why. So our black pusher solenoid is right here. And yeah, we can see it's on. Now what's causing it to be on? We can kind of see our timer seems to be going crazy here. It's going zero to 2000 and right back to zero. And mainly we need to figure out what is going on. Why is the part eject delay done? staying done because before it would drop out. And the reason why is over here, this is plastic and this is an inductive prox. So just like the black sensors wouldn't sense underneath the shiny one, this piece of plastic wouldn't sense. But now this pusher senses anything. And so it's come out, but it's still seeing a part. So it's still trying to eject. So here's where we are gonna add our sensors on the back side to handle that. So we won't even have to look at this to manage ejecting this part. All right, so let's make sure we remember how we program this to make the black pusher go out. So here's our black pusher output. And we have this two second right now extended time. So we were gonna extend for two seconds and then we retracted. But now we have the sensor in the way, that's not gonna work. But we have awesome switches and that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our switches to replace it. And then we have right now, if our solenoid is on or the part eject delay, which is coming from right up here. 
So what we need to do now is one, we only want to look at this black part present the moment we see it. And then we need to ignore it until the part clears. And we're going to do that with a one shot bit. So let's go to rung two. And right here after our part eject delay, we're going to go to our bits tab and we are going to drag down an ONS one shot. And we're just going to call this our black part one shot. And we'll need to create that. So right click it and click new and it'll be a Boolean type. And what that's going to do is it's going to only look at this that one time. So first let's put this in here and let's make sure we've solved this issue before we go any further. So we'll go ahead and put that into the PLC. All right. And it, it seemed to retract really quickly. And so we'll take one of our black parts and we'll drop it in. All right, so we got a long delay going back and I don't know, is our machine fixed good enough? Do we even need to deal with these switches? Because, you know, they're a couple hundred bucks a piece probably. So let's drop another one in just to be sure. Looks good. But all right, now let's drop one in. Let's drop another one in right behind it. Uh-oh. So we still got a problem, mainly has to do with all that delay we had to have because, you know, as our cylinder gets old and rusty, it may not operate the same. So next we want to use the extend input that we have off of our sensor in place of that two second time delay. So let's find it for one, and it's right here. See, black pusher extended. So that's it right there. But if we go to our controller tags, and open up our local inputs. And right here we have black pusher extended and that is input number six. So what we're gonna do now is let's go to our main routine. And right now we say if this extended delay is not done, then continue extending. Well, we're gonna change that. Actually, let's put it right in line. Yeah, this is another good exercise of, you know, having multiple conditions that could drop something out. Is, let's say that, now I'm not going to say whether this is a good idea or not. We're just trying things. Let's say that we're not sure that the sensor's always going to work. Or, you know, we're like, well, just in case the sensor ever fails, we should have a time delay. Now, I probably would argue against it, but we can do it. So now let's look and let's say... We're going to put another examine off and we are going to look at local colon one colon i dot data dot seven. It wasn't seven. What was it? Six? Yeah, six. And now let's put that in there. So let's hit our start button. And we'll drop our part. Whoa, and you saw it. it, it retracted really fast. Let's get a close up of that just so we can see. Let's drop it in and down. And absolutely the moment that it saw that light, it retracted. So now let's drop two of them in and see just how well it does. So we're gonna drop that one in. We're gonna drop another one right behind it. And there you go. We have now increased the throughput of this machine or its throughput capability. In other words, this cylinder is no longer a bottleneck. But we also left that two second delay in there. Does it actually do anything now? Well, let's, let's find out. Let's, let's take our screwdriver and let's remove input number six. We'll hit a start button and now we'll bring some parts down. All right, and there's that long delay, but it does continue to work if for some reason the sensor was bad. But we are going to be back to our problem, which I didn't do a close-up of this earlier. Let's drop two parts in there just like we just did. First one comes out, 
Oh, and we're jammed and the second one misses. And that's the advantage of running off of switches instead of time. Is with a switch, you have something very definite. Parts there, eject. I've extended, now I can retract. I'm ready for the next part. Whereas timed, okay, I think it's about two seconds. Let's close our eyes and swing the bat. I hope we hit it. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. So if you're trying to make a decision between using sensors or not using sensors, I would always say put the sensors on if you have any doubt. I guess that's the best rule on that. Now, we also have this one. We had not really done anything with it yet. So we can do that. In fact, you have all the code you need. If we look right here, this one rung, well, besides the part eject delay, this one rung is what actually is doing all that work. So let's just copy this rung and let's paste it. And first, we're not gonna use the part eject delay this time. I hadn't really thought of something to do with it yet, but who knows, the video's not over yet. So we're going to look at local colon one colon i dot data dot one. And that is going to be our shiny part pusher. Now, important, we cannot use the same address here for this one shot. And man, that would make a good video. But as long as the last one that we went on a rabbit trail was, I don't want to do that again. So we're mainly going to change this to the shiny part one shot. So we'll right click it and we'll need a new one of those. And then we're not even going to use the timer because we're confident now. We're, we're going to take our timer out. We're going to say we don't need that. But what we do need is we need to be looking instead of looking at the black pusher extended, we need to look at the shiny pusher extended. And that's going to be local colon one colon i dot data dot four. There's our shiny pusher extended. And then our shiny pusher solenoid is local colon one colon o dot data dot one. And we'll want to drag that to right there. And there we go, this should work. Let's find out. So we'll put this in our program and we'll hit our start button. So we'll drop our part. There we go. So now we should be able to drop our black part. Pretty cool. So let's drop multiple parts. So first we can start by dropping that. Yep, that one got there. Yep, that one got there. So we should be able to just drop them all. Shouldn't matter the order or anything. Yeah, it's always satisfying when the machine works like you hope it does. So I think this is a good place to stop this video. What did we learn today? We learned, well, hopefully we hit the point home that if you can use sensors, use sensors, time is not always a good, repeatable, reliable method of control. We also learned how to take a trigger off of an input, just one, look at it one time or a one shot, and that's how we use that ejector. As soon as we saw the sensor, we pulled right back. I think we can probably get a few more videos out of this. I think we can probably, let's, let's see, we could do some staging. Also, you know, right now, if we hit the start button, this thing runs forever. Well, what if it never sees a part? We probably should shut it off. We could save a little electricity that way. So again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And you two think you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.